if you're looking for an audience for your game, the, the process that it takes to get from zero to even 500 fans is rigorous and difficult and terrifying. And if your game is suddenly completely blind accessible, there is an audience of tens of thousands of people just thirsting for accessible games. They will get you there. They will help you generate buzz if your game is good and they love it. Um, so this is, this is a process that can help you. Hello, I'm Brian, and I'm gonna be taking you through the accessibility measures that I've put into my game Lost and Hound so that it is fully accessible for blind gamers. All right, so the first one is just the main mechanic, and it is your rescue dog. Um, so you've got to follow this invisible trail, um, a scent trail, represented by a hum, which you should be able to hear. And when you step off the trail, you're no longer going in the right direction, the hum disappears. There's no visual indication of the hum, just like a scent trail for a dog. It is all audio-based, even though there are some nice and satisfying visuals um, paired with it, it's still all through audio. Um, and you know, this works in two ways. One, it's the it works for blind gamers because that's their that's how they're going to take in all the information. And two, I mean, it's pretty natural to a dog. I mean, that's that's why we use them for everything is because when it comes to the senses, they're like superheroes. Um, the second one is attenuation switch based on movement. What that means is the way that the game processes the audio and sends you the audio changes um, depending on how, if you're moving or not moving. And this is because when a dog is walking along a trail, their head's down, their ears are down, and then they pop up and their ears are up, and it's like they're suddenly receiving all these sounds when all they could hear were their footsteps before. Um, and I'll just show that off right now. So ears are down, I'm walking, and then I stop and suddenly I can hear things much further in the distance, straight ahead. And I'll just do it again. You hear those crickets. You can hear the ones in the distance as well when I stop. So you can hear in a straight line right ahead of you if you stop for a moment and listen. And dogs that are chasing something I mean that's exactly what they do. I'll stop for a second, listen, and go back to tracking. Um, another thing that helps out is a kind of sonar and waypoint system that I've got so that gamers who um, are blind can figure out where they need to go and they can even mark an area that they want to come back to later so it'll kind of reset um, the sonar. So one button is sniff. And that will, you have to mark something first, so I guess I'll go up to a tree, and, and marking is exactly what it sounds like. So I've just marked that spot. Now, when I sniff, it's going to give me a sonar ping to lead me back to that spot, unless I do it somewhere else. So it's a way for, um, it's a navigation system for blind gamers to say, hey, this is important, I need to get back here. Um, and the other, the other way that, that they can find their way is the start, the very beginning of the map that you usually have to return to um, when you're rescuing somebody, you bring them back to safety. Um, that has its own sonar ping and that's the middle mouse button. So I'll just do a sniff and you can hear what that sounds like. So it's this very unnatural kind of me metallic airy sound with a long reverb tail. Here it is again. And when you move around, you can hear it as it's fading, you can hear it change its direction. Let's do it one last time. And it changes based on where the dog is facing. And that's something actually, as game does, we don't think about. In, um, in a lot of basic um, third person game templates, we, we don't think about how if you're blind, um, you need to make sure that the character direction is attuned to the sound system because usually it's the camera. I can rotate the camera um, and if I do that same thing, the sound is going to change while my dog is not, fa is not changing direction. So it's attuned to the camera. So if this is the case, you need to have some kind of system 
where the camera is glued to your third person perspective and changes direction with them because if I'm blind, I'm not going to know that the camera is moving. There's nothing to indicate that. There's nothing that tells me that and there's no way to measure it. Um, so that's pretty important and it's something that we really just don't think about which is a problem. All right. The next one is um, something that I call the level anchor. And it's something where in each level you need something that's kind of in the middle that'll help with bearings, um, that'll help people without sight get their bearings. In this one I've got a river bisecting the map in two. Um, I've, I actually need to increase the volume of it um, so that you can hear it throughout almost the entire level. But this is what is going to give a sense of direction um, and a sense of center to anybody that's playing this without vision. Um, in my city level, I've got um, roadworks that you can hear from everywhere. And that's just a way to kind of figure out, oh yeah, that's there, so I've got to go here. Um, you need to have audio signifiers so that people can build a map in their head. And again, as sighted people, we just don't think about this stuff, but it's, you know, it's time to. Um, right, and the last one that I want to talk about is something that I call the Watson mechanic. And I call it that because um, I'm a big fan of, of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's um, the, the Sherlock stories. And in the books, Watson exists for one reason. He, he only exists for one reason, and it's to make the audience feel less stupid. Um, that's the only reason he's there. There's no other reason. He's there to ask questions we're thinking, but obviously can't ask a character when we're reading a book. Um, and people, uh, sorry, Sherlock explains things to him, and while Sherlock's very polite, without Watson, we would just feel dumb the whole story. We would feel like, oh yeah, you know, why didn't I know that? Why didn't I get that? But Watson gets to kind of feel dumb for us, and that makes us feel better. It makes us feel like I'm the only one that didn't get it. Oh yeah, no, no, there's Watson too. That's cool. And of course, he's a doctor. So if he didn't get it, and he's you know as smart as a doctor, we're okay. Um, we need, we need that in our games, especially for 3D games with um, the intent of blind accessibility. Now, in my game, I've got the trainer, uh, whose name is Hayden. And he follows you around, he points things out that, um, that blind people would need to understand, um, like this. Hey, Biscuit, you found some fruit. I bet these were his snacks for the day. I wonder how he's holding all this. We're still on the right track. Keep going. Aiden exists to point things out, to reaffirm that you're doing the right thing, you're on the right trail. Um, and he exists to explain things visually that we, we would need to know if we didn't have any sight. Um, he also exists to help teach us, help guide us. Um, it's so important that we, we put some kind of force in our game that is that, that, that is a, a guide, um, an ex, you know, the sage kind that, that helps you understand the world, helps you kind of move in the world. And, you know, we overlook it because in a lot of game types, maybe that wouldn't fit. You know, obviously in a real-time strategy game, you're going to have to create some kind of story about someone that's helping you out. Um, Defense Grid did it so well with this character that would just pop up and tell you what you needed to know. Um, so I think that's something that's really important is adding an element of the story that interacts with you and helps you um, and makes you feel a little bit more comfortable with not knowing what you're doing. And that's, I mean, that's for everybody. We need to do that for everybody. So those are my five points for now. It was um, the basic sound mechanic, the sound and scent. It was the attenuation switch based on movement, um, the sonar and waypoint system, the level anchor, and the Watson mechanic. So those are the five main things that make this game fully accessible to blind people. Um, and it's just, it's, it's such a huge thing. You have no idea how many blind gamers there are out there. If you're looking for an audience for your game, the the process that it takes to get from zero to even 500 fans is rigorous and difficult and terrifying. And if your game is suddenly completely blind accessible, 
there is an audience of tens of thousands of people just thirsting for accessible games. They will get you there. They will help you generate buzz if your game is good and they love it. Um, so this is, this is a process that can help you in a big way. And I think it, that, that's powerful and it really can't be ignored. Um, right, I hope you like this video and check out my walkthrough of Legacies, the other game that I'm working on. Um, if you want to see blind accessibility in a different um, setting, it's all from inside a sub where no natural sound can really make its way in, so it's the polar opposite of Lost and Hound. Um, so if you kind of want to see how it's implemented a complete opposite way, it's all through, um, it's all through kind of meters and beeps and, you know, sub equipment, um, please check that out. That's also in my channel and I'll put the link below. Thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed it.